Hi, Mark, Technopair. Hi, so today's a fun day. I'm going to be releasing ORAC 2 for the Raspberry Pi. Um, I want to explore now just quickly what um, I think special about the Raspberry Pi and ORAC. Um, and then I'm going to actually talk about the installation and show it in use, etc. So the Raspberry Pi is very popular these days. It's being used in quite a lot of commercial products as well. But for me, the Raspberry Pi's home is DIY really. It's actually about giving an affordable solution to everyone. Um, and that's what that's what I like the idea of ORAC is that again it's free and open source as well and it's to give a musical instrument to everyone. Now you're going to need an audio interface. Uh, the audio interface that's built into the Raspberry Pi is not very good. Um, you can use anything you want. You can buy cheap USB ones. Um, I actually use the Pi Sound from Blokers, which I'll give links on below. Um, I've no affiliation to them at all. Um, but the reason I like it is very simple. First of all, you just click it together and it's one unit. Second thing is that it has MIDI DIN on it, so as well as USB. And then it has an in and an out and two gain knobs. Simple, easy. Put it in a case, which they also sell, you're ready to go. It's great. Okay, so what else do we need for the Raspberry Pi? Well, obviously, we can use any MIDI controller. That's not a problem. You can buy a MIDI controller for 50 quid. Um, and so, really, you can be done for 100, 150 quid euros. Um, you can have a setup quite easily. Um, and it's flexible. It's powerful. And Aurac's going to make it simple to use, as I'll show you. The other thing you're going to need with um, a Raspberry Pi is to install some kind of Linux distribution. Now, you can use anything with ORAC, uh, but we're doing audio work here, so we want to keep it low latency. Uh, you can go to various sites and find out how to do that. But fortunately, because Blocus actually needed to have something for their users, they've actually released an open source audio distribution, which is fantastic, called Patchbox OS, which I'm going to actually feature in this video, because I think unless you have a good reason to not use it, this is the way you should go. So that's it. I mean, basically, for, what, 150 euros or something, you can have a modular synth running on a Pi that's properly connected with a proper audio interface with um, proper ins and outputs. You're ready to go. I love it. <laughs> So the first thing you're going to want to do is to go to blocus.io to get their Patchbox OS, which, as I mentioned, is um, already been optimized for um, audio use. And as I say, this will work on everything, not just their Pi sound board. So if we could scroll down here, we've got it come down to more info, and then we can simply come in here and download the software. And it gives you all the features, etc. And there's some very good documentation on here as well. Um, but we'll just download it. Um, I've obviously done that already, so <laughs> we're not going to do that again. The next thing you need to do is to put that onto your SD card. And the way you do that is to use um, an SD card writer. Um, and then you need some software. I use etcher.io, uh, which has now been renamed to Balino.io. So again, this is free. Just come in, download it for your platform and off you go. In downloaded the two things and you've installed etch.io so we'll start that and you've inserted your uh, SD card reader writer into the computer. So now all we do is select the image from Patchbox, 
select our drive. You'll see here, obviously, that it's a smaller one. <laughs> and then just click Flash. Boop. That's it. Uh, it'll ask for your password. That's all OK. And then off it goes. Um, I'm obviously not going to sit here waiting. It's going to take two minutes, but I'll fast forward the video. Okay, so we're now new there. Next step is you can obviously remove the card and insert it into your Pi. Now, you're going to either need to do one of two things here. Uh, we're going to need to configure the Pi. It's very, very simple. Um, but you'll either need to plug this into your TV using an HDMI monitor and a USB keyboard. Uh, so you can control it, or you can alternatively uh, do it via uh, a network interface via um, an Ethernet cable. I'm going to do the latter just because um, I can screen record it, um, but either, either works exactly the same. You'll be seeing the same thing. So... The Pi is now actually booted, so I'm going to use, as I say, a terminal to log in. Uh, you can do this directly from the keyboard. That the user name is Patch, and the machine is called uh, Patchbox, so, uh, and the password is initially Blocus Labs. And so we're we're in already. Okay, and it starts with the script to tell us what we're going to do. Okay. Just follow the questions, really. I'm going to use a new password. Choose one that you can remember. Now here, if you're not using a Pi Sound card, then obviously you'll be listed here. Um, I'm using the Pi Sound card, so I'll just select it. But select whichever you need. Uh, and I'm going to select 48 uh, sample rate of 48,000. Uh, we'll just take the defaults that they're recommending, 128. Uh, again, I'm just following the defaults. Okay, we're going to select um, a console environment. This means that we're not going to have x Windows running. Uh, this can all be changed later if you want. Uh, yes, I'm going to connect to my Wi-Fi network. Obviously, this is going to be <laughs> hidden. Uh, just, I happen to be in Spain. Okay, so this is an important thing. You can run, run Patchbox config whenever you want. Um, it actually tells you, as you can see here as well. Um, but we, we're basically set up now. Now what we need to do is, because at the moment ORAC has not been uh, released, uh, sorry, Patchbox OS is uh, a little bit older, we're going to just update it. Um, what this does, as you, with as you do update, is just up as you do update just updates what software is available to um, soft it's not actually going to download any software it's just going to update what's available to it obviously you need a network connection for this okay now what we're going to do is we're going to update um, the underlying software that Patchbox uses. So we do that with this following command, which is apt install patchbox-gli. So this is just a, an updated version of the Patchbox software. The reason for this is that um, it's got new features to support um, ORAC. Um, 
obviously when uh, Blokers release a new version of Patchbox, this will no longer be required. Okay, so now we're ready to go again. Now what we need to do is just to tell it to um, use the or right. So as you do patch box dash config and we go down to selecting a patch box modules. So here they're going to allow all sorts of different modules that you can load and you can then switch between them. Uh, we're obviously interested in ORAC. It's now actually going to download ORAC. So here you can see it's found MEC, which is used for remote control and ORAC. That's it, we're done. There's only really one thing else to say, really. Um, so the idea is that with Aurex, is all it will start automatically when the Pi sound, uh, when the Raspberry Pi is booted. Um, the only thing is it doesn't have the remote interface started. Um, and the reason for that is that usually you're using it standalone, you don't want the extra um, CPU resources, etc., that Wi Fi entails. So, what you need to do is when the uh, Pi Sound starts, if you need to use the remote interface, so your phone or pure data on your computer, you simply press the button once. And you will see that the Pi Sound will flash its two lights once to tell you that the remote interface has been enabled. Um, and if you press it again, it will flash twice to tell you that it's disabled. Um, the only um, other thing to know, um, if you want to forcefully restart ORAC, you could just shut down uh, Pi Sound, or you could, um, or the alternative is you can actually click on the button twice, um, and that will force ORAC to restart if you have any problems. Um, Apart from that, that's really it. I mean, the, the rest you've seen in the rest of the videos, you can select modules and build your racks using the pure data or um, uh, iPhone interface or whatever. Thank you. 